So, hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be covering the basic steps that I take before I get started on any of my watercolor paintings. Um, this is everything that you normally don't see before you actually see the painting itself. Um, I think it's a good thing to highlight those. So I have this set up in two different parts. I'm going to cover the supplies and then the actual setup that I do before I get ready to actually paint. Um, so starting off with supplies, we have the water. And yes, I am actually being serious that this needs to be said for a watercolor painting. But I have two containers here. One is for dirty brushes and then one is for clean brushes. And it's a good habit to get into that right off the bat so that way you're not actually muddling, muddying up your paints and you don't dilute the colors. Um, I know it's not everyone's, it's not talked about a lot, but um, trust me, your paintings are going to thank you later for it, so get into that habit now. They'll thank you later. Um, the next thing that I'm going to cover are the brushes. So these are synthetic hair brushes, and since I'm working with a smaller canvas size than a lot of paintings, I'm going to be using smaller brushes. So I have a two and a five, which is probably going to be used for most of the detail, and then eight, which will be used for the background or for anything that needs, you know, a wider, more even finish. And then finally for the supplies, I have the paint. So you can see I already have the paint laid out here. I would try to keep it in an analogous order from the color wheel. And so I have a crimson, I have a pink, and a violet. And then I have a phthalo blue, then an ultramarine blue, and then a phthalo green. So these are the colors that I like to stick to. This is my kind of color palette of choice. I usually use these a lot. And if I need to actually um, get a darker value or a lighter value, I will add China white or Payne's gray to them you know, accordingly. I keep those colors separate from the rest so that way they don't get too, um, I guess contaminated is a word you could use by all the other colors. So that is the paint and the other supplies that I would discuss would be the paper itself. This is 140 pound cold press paper from Strathmore. Um, I think it's pretty affordable as far as watercolor paper goes because they can get up there. This one is um, kind of kept in a journal. I like to use it for um, practice. It's not terribly expensive, so you can you know do a whole bunch of different paintings on it. Um, so that covers all the supplies that I think you should need for this. Um, now I'm going to go on to the preparation. So the first step in a lot of these paintings that I do, and I'm sure a lot of artists do this as well, is to start off with thumbnail sketches. And I can describe these as basically, you know, more elaborate doodles. Like they have, you know, a set parameter and then they're really quickly done. You can churn out a whole bunch of them really quickly. That's the whole point is that you don't get too attached to one idea and you keep experimenting as you go to see which one works and what doesn't. These are the thumbnails that I had for this piece in particular. Um, you can see I was entertaining a whole bunch of random ideas. I also had then to move on to roughs. So thumbnails and then roughs. These are the two roughs that I came up with. This one is very heavily centered on birds and I thought that it didn't really lend itself too well to watercolor. So I then decided to go in a different direction where a young woman is featured with birds flying sort of around her. And I thought that that could really be a beautiful watercolor painting. So that's the one that I chose. And I will show you how far I've gotten so far on my painting. And this is where we're at right now. So because I did a rough, I found out what I liked about this and what I didn't. I excluded certain details such as the hand and also where she was placed within the canvas. Um, that's the beauty of doing a rough is that, you know, you can, you've already done something that you 
didn't spend too much time on. So you can then correct whatever things you didn't like and then keep the things that you did for your final piece. I think it just helps really create a, a satisfactory painting. Um, so that's 13. Um, that's everything that I do that you don't normally see before you see the painting itself. And yeah, I just wanted to cover those steps with you guys. Um, I have time-lapse footage of how I got here painting, so we'll take. 